It's the time of our lives. We do not know what to do. That was a that is no, it's not it's not going good already. Things are working. Things are recording. Did you stop? <laughs> I thought you turned it off. It's like nope. Bullshit. There's the don't down. Hello. That's the last time I ever ask you to just do it. I was like, I was like, say something real cool. There's like off, off the cuff, you know, like impress everyone, impress me, impress me. And I do not went, need to impress you. We've been friends for long enough now where I don't need to do anything to impress you. That's true, but sometimes it's just nice for you to make the effort, you know. Like, <laughs> I've become stale. I've become complacent. We basically need to go on queer eye at this point because sometimes none I just of want my... to come home to a bath being drawn for me with some candles and some spaghetti bolognese on the go, you know, but. I didn't even know until about three weeks ago when you told me how to reduce a sauce. How the fuck am I going to make you a good bolognese? I still don't understand what reduction means. You even explained it to me like full blown the other day in the park. And I still don't know what reduction means. I don't make know. Make it less. Make it less. <laughs> Can't what say it any... <laughs> anyway, my name's Gary Gordon. I'm stuck here with the world's worst sous chef. <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait. Imagine we opened a restaurant together. The Dead End Restaurant. What's your name? Gonna tell me your name before we Dead get Dead End Restaurant. That's Dead what it is. Restaurant. Dead End oh. Restaurant. We've done it. We've done okay. it. We're gonna find a place in Mitchell Street or somewhere that's like fancy and shit. Mitchell Street's a real place, right? My name is Craig Jimson. Welcome to episode 13 of Dead End Friends oh, Podcast. We are starting off fucking real fired up today. But yeah. Dead End Mid- Restaurant. Yes, Mid- Mitchell Street is a place. Dead End Restaurant would be good. <laughs> it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be anything better than good. It would just be good. <laughs> I mean, I Although, do. Make... You know, we could think of a better name because I got really annoyed about the playlist that we made. Right. Uh, mainly annoyed at myself because I called it Dead End Jams, and uh-huh. I was like, "Oh, we could have just called it Dead End Friend Jams, and then we could have just shortened that to Death Jam, and then we could have ripped that oh. off, and then it would have been way better." Straight up, would have got sued. Nah, no one's listening to us. Did you ever play? There was a game. Oh, I'm Def Jam Vendetta. Def Jam Vendetta. Vendetta. Oh my Go God. on. See, Hit see, me with it. It's the best game of all time. Fucking fighting. What was it? It was Ghostface Killer. It was like the hardest motherfucker beating that game. Yeah, oh, and then you could I be like Joe game. Budden. You could be Ice T. Joe Budden? Uh, Remember that guy? I need to look this yeah. up now. What was it called again? You could, Vendetta. You, Death. Yeah, Def Jam Vendetta. But I think yeah. Death, Death Jam Vendetta was the second one, I think. And. Um, you could like make your own character. Yeah. I obviously always made him white as shit because I'm white <laughs> as shit. And they, they always ended up looking like Paul from Tekken 3. Like just like super blonde <laughs> yeah. with a flat top for no reason. I like, oh oh right. man. Str- right, I man. was straight up like no fucking bullshit on this. My entire like last three, maybe, maybe three years in high school, I was straight up called Steve. And the reason, <laughs> the, the reason for being called Steve, some some people I know still call me that, by the way. Like, I'll meet people in the street that I've not seen for years, and I'll just hear, Steve! I'm like, who the fuck is shouting Steve? What? And I turn around and somebody's shouting at me, because that's what I was called in school. And it was because we used to do, like, bullshit fucking PlayStation 2 Tekken tournaments, and I always played Steve, who was, like, the boxer motherfucker, <laughs> and, like, railroaded these guys at Tekken, because I... they were all bullshit. So they called me Steve for like four years in high school. I was called Steve. And I still get it every so often. Oh man, you could be DMX in this game. R.I.P. R.I.P. Oh, There's I love that we said DMX, that exact same time. Method Man, Red Man, Ludacris, Noor, Capone, Scarface, Ghostface Killer, Keith Murray, WC, Joe Budden, and DJ Funk Master Flex. Ah! That was wow. so good. Oh, look at this guy. This guy's called Drake. That's not Drake. <laughs> that's not the Drake I know. <laughs> that's his son. <laughs> Give him another 20 years and that's his boy. I, was, I, that, I remember that being one of the most like difficult fucking games ever. I remember me. I used to play it at my friend's house. He lived in Campbelltown. Macrahanish in Campbelltown he lived. Fucking nothing there, but also beautiful at the same time. We yeah. used to, we used, I used to go there like in the summer during like the summer holidays, and we would like try and play that game and try and beat it. And we, I don't think we ever fucking did because it was so goddamn hard. It was like you thought you'd, you'd got to a point where you thought you were gonna win, and then like fucking DMX would come and just close like the shit out of you, and that's you fuck. 
like done for the day. Oh man, <laughs> infuriating. Absolutely that game was infuriating. great, man. They don't make them like that anymore, you know. Mm-mm. Everything's, Everything's very open world and fucking beautiful to look at. I'm like, no, just make me be ludicrous and beat up other people. <laughs> Obviously, the soundtrack was great. It had yeah, to be. It was... I don't remember the music, but I'm assuming with that star lineup, let's it's going find, to be. Let's find the Wikipedia. Surely it'll be somewhere on the Wikipedia. I the was fucking... on the Wikipedia, but it didn't really show me too much. <clears throat> let's just Google Def Jam Vendetta soundtrack. I mean, there's a lot of. Oh shit, right away. There's like three DMX tracks right at the beginning. There's fucking 21 songs. So, Snoop Dogg. DMX, Scarface, Christina Milian. Oh my god. Oh my oh, god. Christina Milian. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. What film was she in? She was in a film with The Rock. Or, sorry, Dwayne. She was in a film with Dwayne. And no, Dewey. <laughs> and Dwayne played, I want to say he was a, a bodyguard for Vince Vaughn. And he was like. What? Oh, what was this film, man? So it was a You're bodyguard. asking the wrong guy if you're talking about It was about a bodyguard. Films. John Travolta was in this film as well, I'm sure. It had like a really fucking stellar cast. Oh, that's going to bug the shit out of me. I'm Hold sure. on. Hold on. I've just remembered the second game. Def Jam Fight for New York. Um, and the characters on this were way weirder. I don't think I played that one. Uh, you could go Bubba Sparks, Buster Rhymes. Well, Lil' uh, Kim? You could be Carmen Electra. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Trail. Oh, what? Fucking Danny Fat Trail. Joe, Favor Flav. Henry Rollins. Flav All right. F- Flavor Flav. Ice I fucking tea. love Favor Flav. You just say Henry this... Rollins, as in like Black Flag Henry Rollins. Yeah. Just like throwing I think in this there. is the one I remember playing more. I. I like, like, because this one has like girls on it as well, like Lil Kim and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. pretty fucking sick. Um, yeah, uh, Omar Epps. Is he like a real guy or is that like a, a made-up guy? <laughs> I know, Mike Epps. He, he's a real guy. He's a real he, guy. He's he real. He real guy. He real. He real guy. Who is this? Sean Paul. Sean Paul. Sean Paul. Um, you can go oh, slap guy, guy he used to work with had the fucking middle name, Paul, and he was called Sean. I, sh- I probably should have said first <laughs> that his name was Sean. <laughs> so his name was Sean. <laughs> And his last name was something else, and then his middle name was Paul. But he kept it quiet Shut for a very it. long time, so ah, none of us knew. And then he ah, just there's a guy up. in this called Sticky Fingers. Uh, with, where is the Z in Sticky Fingers? It's got to be there somewhere. Oh, it's, yeah, at the end. Yeah. As. It's, not even, it's not fingers, it's fingers. Fingers, obviously. And man. then you can be Warren G and Exhibit. Yeah, this was the second one. I remember playing that more. I had both of them because I loved those games. Yeah. But... um. Your camera actually looks hot in this. What? Well, as like a character. Yeah. Are we just she about to drop off, didn't she? Are we about to just open up Gary's like weird fucking like three D character fetish? Nah, that's weird. But Carmen Electra was always hot, so it is. Yeah. What it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't actually know any notable things about Carmen Electra. Was she an actress? I think she was a Playboy bunny more than anything. She was right. Okay. Her. Um, she was in Scary Movie, wasn't she? She was the one, like, the, the first one where she got stabbed in the titty. No the fucking idea, silicon. man. <coughs> I think I have seen one Scary Movie film. Is it the first one? No, I think it was, like, fucking four. Cool, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you drinking out of a fucking Viking glass. Is that water as well? Who are you? It's got a dry throat. You get a dry throat, so you're drinking out of, like, the biggest glass of all time. It says, camp and gas, live and not given. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a present from Duncan. Because <laughs> they, cause they call me gas, like, yeah. in the chat. Yeah. And uh, when me and Shanna went camping, the uh, the company, the, the, like, the gas canister was called camp and gas, and I was like, oh my god, uh, camping gas. Yeah. And I always say, like, live and not given in that chat, and Duncan put it on a mug <laughs> and a cup. <laughs> <laughs> so I just drink out it. And I'm feeling dehydrated. Deep feeling dehydrated? I mean, I probably should yeah. start drinking water. I've got I'm a couple of beers deep, but I'll worry about it. I've not been on. drinking as much water as I usually do, and I've definitely been feeling gross for it. So yeah. I'm getting back on the, the H2O. water train. 
Yeah. It's too old. I think I, I think it was... It's too old. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the similar stuff I was saying last week is just like, because I haven't been working out, <coughs> I haven't been like eating well and stuff. And it kind of goes hand in hand with like water as well. Like I don't really drink a lot of it. But I've past couple of days, because I've started working out again, I was like, right, I actually need to drink water because I will actually die because I'm working out and I'm not drinking any water. Yeah, I would like to be stay. Sore. I would like to stay like awake and not pass out for any reason. So yeah. started drinking some of that water. But like wow. It, it, it does make you feel so much better. I remember you gave me a proper hard time about it because I was just like, I don't drink water. Yeah. And then just like how much fucking better you feel after just having like a glass. It's insane. Your I body's just like, oh, replenishment. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. <laughs> oh, Christ. I mean, it's, it's, it's another fucking weird week. It's been another weird week. But we might be. I still am waiting to see it actually happen. But we might be getting moved into level two at the weekend, which is fucking rad. Yeah. So rad. I don't actually know what it means other than we can drink in pubs. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, I got rather, the important stuff out of the way and I was like, right, that's it. Nothing else. Does it make any changes to the way you guys are working? No. No? Nope. Well, that's, that's a thing. That, I guess that would be as much of like a fucking shocker. Like changing yeah. levels, there's nothing really needs to change for what you guys are doing. No, there's other things like, I guess we can go into other people's houses properly now. Like, Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It'll be cool. It'll be cool for it to happen at last. Yeah. Catch up with the rest of the world. I feel like we're, we're just proper lacking behind, like in, especially in Scotland, because everyone's kind of getting out and doing things a wee bit more, and I feel like we're just stuck, and we've been stuck doing the same shit for so long. Not that, not that I think what I do now will change. <laughs> I'll probably no. still just do the same shit that I'm doing now. I'm not going I think having I'm the option of doing stuff, you know? Yeah. I think having the option to say no to it, you're like, ah, could do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's just stuff. It's those little changes that that change your mindset on everything. Yeah, like the fact that you maybe could, if you fancied it. Yeah, is a nice thing to to know you've got. Yeah, I could, I could maybe drive up to like Aviemore and go and jump out of a tree because they have like outdoor tree centers there. So if I felt like doing that, I probably could. Or outdoor tree centers? Does that mean like forests? <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> No, but my words didn't, outdoor tree center. My words straight up what? didn't come out right. So here we are now, outdoor climbing centers that just happen to be in trees. <laughs> outdoor tree centers, <laughs> ah, <laughs> as opposed to those indoor trees. <laughs> well, Christmas trees—they're indoors. Yeah, but they start their life as outdoor trees. Yeah, but then eventually they end their life inside. And technically, there's more of them inside because. You have the fake ones as well. So technically more Christmas trees are inside than they are outside. So fuck you. Immediately fuck you. Aight. You're doing that thing that you said yesterday to me. I need to stop doing. You're so fucking far away from the mic. <laughs> Aight. <laughs> so I've got a hair stuck in my thumb. I can't get it out. <laughs> like I know there's got other things I should be concentrating on you're right now. But it really up. fucking hurts. You're like Tobey Maguire in the Spider-Man films. You know that scene where just like zooms right in on his thumb and he's just got hairs coming out yeah but this is other people's hairs it's gross <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing but yeah it'd be nice to finally be in the level two not that i really know the differences it's going to make i mean i got an email from the gym that i go to saying i could go to classes but i froze my gym membership yeah. because i hurt my back so i can't use them yet which is nice so i was like i'm not fucking paid money when i can't actually use it because <clears throat> i fucked my back up yeah that makes no sense. But that and then, sense. but uh, and then, the other side of me is like, will I go back? See, because I've got so used to doing it at home now. Yeah, but I guess it would be good to like up it and stuff, you know. Get ripped, bruh. Yeah, I could not imagine myself as being like actually ripped. I think like getting I to could. like a healthy, not fat, not gonna die in my fifties level is like sick for me, but like. I see, like, obviously, like, we're all guilty of doing it. You flick through the Instagram and you see all the fucking handsome, tan, blonde, blue-eyed, German-looking motherfuckers who are just, like, ripped to shit 
they've got really nice tattoos and the sun is just hitting their body in the most perfect way you can see all the lines and their fucking abs and shit and i look at it and i go i mean it could be nice but with my head on top of that body ah i don't know i think i would look look. do you think so yes you're tall as fuck of course you look amazing ripped just because i'm tall does not mean that i would look good it means that your frame would carry it well you absolutely would look so damn good you look fucking fantastic now good save but i'm telling you ripped (laughs) i'd be moist always i just need to hand out towels when i walk about i'd be dreeping I don't know, it, just, it seems like a lot of work for somebody that doesn't have a strong work ethic when it comes to their physical health. Like, Aye, But that's the point. You get to a point where you're just like, oh, now I need to do the next thing. You know? Like, it's all well and good maintaining, I think. And I think I'd get to a certain point and I'd maintain anyway. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think to get yourself to that level and then be like, okay, I know I'm done. Yeah. But that level could be ripped and then you just maintain being ripped. Yeah, I suppose. You know? I suppose. Like, I, I, have, a, I have a friend who is ripped as shit like i don't have many friends so you, you know that my my eclectic crowd isn't very isn't very large but i have one friend in particular that is very ripped and he's he's um he's a very modest man and i think i've only ever seen his body like twice and i straight up just like will drop all of my clothing and just stand next to him and just be close to him because i'm just like how the how the fuck I, I, <clears throat> my thing is right like i just said there i just I can't imagine putting that much time in to look that way. That just, like, it, I don't know. I think there's just something missing in my brain. Because it's like that with, like, a lot of things. I'm just like, yeah. I'm not going to put the time in. Because I can't really be bothered. I'd rather just sit and eat Doritos and watch Workaholics and drink a beer. Like, I would rather just hang out. But, the, like, the people that are, like, so driven by it. So, like, hell-bent. Like, that's the only thing they fucking think about. They get up in the morning and they're like, I need to have my fucking oats for my breakfast so I can work out properly later because there's loads of iron in my dry ass oats. But it's like everything is like so planned out in their entire day. Oh man, I just I just wake up and then hope that I make it to the end of the day so I can go to bed. Yeah, I get it. But that's because you're not letting it be your entire thing. But if you wanted it to be your entire thing, that's what you would have to do. You would have to count the calories look at your nutrients like the macros whatever those are and like be like oh so i need to eat this at this time this at this time i need to make sure i get this much protein i need to make sure that i'm losing this many calories like that that's these boys who are and girls who are going to the gym nowadays and um <clears throat> like want to have that physique they really plan it out which like power to them like like you said i don't really have that in me either i just need to make sure that i eat well enough to like my body to react well to working out like but that's because i'm not overly fussed about being super ripped you know like i would like to be stronger i would like to look better but i don't want to be i don't want to be counting every calorie i don't want to be counting every single like little thing that goes into me to like make everything better you know because that's, for me, too much effort. But if you did want to get ripped, like, that would be how you do it. You do it. You'd, like, you follow a meal plan. You you get nutritious as fuck. You know, like, when I was... When I was losing all the weight before I started, like, lifting weights, I would eat the same things all the time. Boring as. But, like, it would be the same sort of thing. In the morning, I'd have, like, overnight oats. Um, I'd have a certain amount weighed out at night. I would put, uh, I'd put like peanut butter and then honey, and then like cinnamon in it. Mm-hmm. Not loads, like enough, um, like to make it interesting to eat at least. Yeah, I'd get to work, I'd eat that, I'd chop a banana up and I'd have that in it. That's my lunch. It'd be my breakfast, and then for lunch I'd be having like a sandwich, you know. And it wouldn't be like the big meaty sandwich. It would be whatever the and salad option is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. So it'd be like a healthier sandwich and then I'd get home and I'd have dinner and it would be some form of protein, veg and carb, you know, like that's what was on my plate. Mm. I tried my best to not snack, didn't always happen. 
I didn't really drink much fizzy juice. I drank a lot of coffee. Mm-hmm. At the time when I was like losing weight properly like that, I wasn't drinking either. Um, so it was easier. Because um, you forget how many calories and shit are in beer. You know, like, it's fucking wild. Yeah. Um, but that was that was the thing. I was just like, I want to lose weight. Here is enough calories to get me through the day. Here is enough, calorie, uh, enough calories to burn off so I was still in like a deficit and stuff. So I was losing weight. Or at least my body was changing. Like... I don't know. Like, yeah, if that's what you want to do, like, uh, if you want to make real changes to your body and whatever, you really got to, you got to be, uh, you got to be dedicated enough to make those changes in your life because working out is not just working out, like, or, or training or whatever you want to call it. Like, it, it has to be a bit of a lifestyle change. It's not like a routine change. Mm-hmm. It's a lifestyle change because you've got to change your lifestyle in order to get the results that you want. And I understand that your results are you just want to like, you know, feel better. Yeah. And what you're doing is going to make you feel better, and that's yeah. what the fucking counts. Yeah. But like, if you were to, if you were to like one day be like, I want like to be shredded, six like six pack, like yeah, you know, just like the biggest biceps of all time, you know. If you wanted to look super trim, and you wanted to look super toned and tight, like you would have to, you would have to like do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... I wish I had that drive. <clears throat> I, wish, I wish I had that drive. Yeah? <laughs> really? I mean, would but... you use it Would you use it for working out or would you use that drive for other things? Like, I think I would like having that drive on certain aspects of life. I don't necessarily think I would use it for working out and getting ripped and shit. Like, I don't know if that's where I would, like, kind of target the drive towards, you know? But I think it would end up there. Yeah, I think, yeah, because once you become like driven and see results in other parts of your life, you only want to see the results in other parts of your life. You know, like mm-hmm. what would be the point in putting your all into something, seeing some really good results, and then like being like super lackluster and everything else? Surely, everything you do, you want to be given like a hundred percent. You know, like right, like I don't know, like the, surely there must be a limit to these people. Do these people that you do see going like fucking full tonto in the gym and stuff like they don't have that drive and desire to do other things in their life like my full drive my thing that gets me up in the morning is making sure that I make sure my kids stay alive that is yeah. literally like my fucking function in life making sure my kids stay alive and making sure my wife is happy enough but like that that is the drive that I have there's obviously obviously other layers to it because there's other things that drive me because I'm sitting here doing a podcast with you at, at night time in the summer Yeah. To, to however many, I actually don't know how many listeners in particular that you have. Like you, you do have the drive to do other things and <clears throat> I don't, there's, me and Emma have this conversation quite often actually where it's like we don't want th- just just our family alone so me, Emma, and the two kids. We don't want that to be our whole personality and yeah. our whole drive to do things. I think for for people that we've seen and people we've come across in our time, that is like their entire personality and their entire world is just their kids or their man or their, their missus, which is fine. Obviously, if that is that is the life that they want to lead, then hundred percent that is what they should do because that is what makes them happy. But me mm-hmm. and Emma are both in the same wavelength. Where we're like, that's not everything. Like, obviously, our family comes first over anything, anything. But that is not. You can't then just kind of go like, right, close the book over. That's them. That's their whole personality done. Kids, wife. So what? Cool. So what you're saying is you have drive for other things. Which is the argument you're making. You, uh, you're saying that you don't have uh, the drive to do whatever. Uh, but you're saying you have the drive to do everything else because you don't want to be stuck in like this one pigeonhole. Like, yes. This is what I'm saying. Cool. Like, I am just... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that everyone... I'm not saying that people who are 100% driven on everything they do are mm. 100% driven on everything they do. But that yeah. they are driven. They are driven because they want to do other things. Yeah. So they give... They give they're all slash as much as they can to all these other things. Yeah, okay. like That's you, fair. You don't eat... Like, I, I'm not saying, like, they're fucking caning it all the time, mm. you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm not saying that they're just going in, they're like, ugh. 
I kind of want to do this thing. Yeah, like they've like, they've decided they've and made like, the decision. I do it. Yes, exactly. They've made yeah. the decision to do it, and that is driving ambition. That's yeah. essentially what it is. Yeah. Making that decision, doing that thing, like drives the middle bit. You know, like the bit that gets you doing that thing. Yeah, I mean um, that that happened right here. Like it did. We talked. Exactly. We talked. We talked about doing this originally. We talked about doing this like six years ago, just yeah. after Luna was born. We talked about doing this, and then obviously a million things happened in that time so we just didn't bother doing it and then it was literally like i mean this is episode 13 so fucking three months ago i was like yo let's do this podcast we've been talking about for years and within two fucking weeks we've recorded the first episode yeah and obviously that at the time there was not a lot going on in both of our lives because <laughs> the world was closed <laughs> yeah and obviously that made the difference but now that we are back to like living a somewhat like normal life uh-huh. or like a bit of a semblance to what that life used to be. Yeah. You know? Like, it's, um, we still do it. We still find the time to do it. Yeah. Because we are now driven to do it because we understand that we actually enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, People, yeah. Like, you don't do things you don't enjoy, you know? Like, what's the point? That is a huge, that is a huge part that plays in this podcast and what we're yeah. doing and the fucking bullshit that we do is like, we actually fucking love doing it. Because it's like we don't ha- we don't get to hang out often just because of lives. Even without yeah. you even take you take the fucking pandemic part out of the situation. Even then, we still don't hang out that much because lives. We both have separate jobs. We both work different weird patterns. I have yeah. kids. You have like a nice new blossoming. I mean, I say new, but you guys have been seeing each other for a while. But it's like a blossoming yeah. relationship. You're in the middle of moving home into your first bought house. Like, shit gets exactly. in the way. So it's like, we want to do this because it's like our time to just be fucking stupid, silly fuckers for like two hours and yeah, forget like, about life, <laughs> the bullshit that is actually happening in the world. Life gets pretty hectic and I think that you've got to be like focused enough to, to find the good things and just, you know, really, really work on them. Yeah, you know, like, and whether that is, you know, working hard at your job that you kinda don't mind, forming new relationships, like trying different things, like working out, whether it's like writing music or being creative, like, yeah, you gotta we- you gotta weed out the week in that sort of sense, you know, like you gotta be like, oh, this bit actually doesn't work for me anymore, I'm done with it, yeah, you know, and yeah. that's still being ambitious because it means that you can put other, yeah. uh, like more energy into the other parts of your life that you deem more important you yeah know? yeah and then there's also the side of like you're not letting that shit you're not letting that other stuff go stale just because you feel like you have to do it exactly. so the stuff like <clears throat> like if this podcast was to get to a point where like we're not into it anymore i, I mean i'll be honest if we're not into it it'll die We'll not do it anymore because it's just the kind of people that we yeah. are. We'll we'll not sit here and be like, oh, fuck, we need to record a fucking podcast tonight. We'll just be like, right, it's run its course, close out, we're done. It'll live exactly. It'll live on the internet for eternity for people to go back and listen to it. We'll get super famous when mm. we're in our 60s. It's all good. But, like, we're not going to we're not gonna sit here and let it be, like, a problem. Just, like, no. uh, just draining the energy from us when we could be, as you're saying going like right that's that part of our lives over let's now move that energy elsewhere <clears throat> and focus on doing that thing so like mm. through the through the pandemic and through the covid era we have obviously lost a huge part of our creative outlet we lost a massive part of it because we couldn't do music anymore we couldn't yeah. do the things that we were doing before not that we were super active before the pandemic hit but it was still a oh, part. It was always the what if. It was still a part of our lives. Like I was still writing a lot of music. I was still trying to pump stuff out as much as I could, and still. I mean, we still have like an album worth of music sitting. Yeah. But that just like that creative expression completely died with the pandemic. Like it's obviously it might just be sitting dormant somewhere in our brains or in our fucking psyche somewhere, but it's not. We're not using our energy on that. So it's like, right, where can I put this creativity in this part of my brain that's going haywire? 
where can I put that? And then we went, hey, <laughs> let's talk in a fucking bullshit microphones for an hour and then hope that that will, like, fill that void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I feel like it is so far. I mean, I get to make stupid fucking pictures every week and it's so much fun, so. Yeah, we get to, we get to have fun. Yeah. And I think that's what's important. Find fun in everything you do, you know? Mm-hmm. Preach. <coughs> I actually had a thing pop in my head today that has just popped in again, so I'm I'm going to talk about it here. Do you have those people in your life that you feel like you have a connection to, and yet there's no real connection there? It might sound like a riddle, but I have examples. <laughs> Yes, I do, yeah. Yeah. So f- I'll use mine for an example to just set the seed of what we're talking about. So we both know this same person. I'm not going to say who they are. But we both know this same person for separate reasons we know this person. And I, I have this really weird connection with them. Although I haven't spoken to them in about six or seven years i still like using instagram and the likes i still keep up to date and they keep up to date with my life and our life but there has been no like (coughs) real relationship there but i feel like there is this weird connection through an avenue so i don't know how long ago this was i'm not good with dates and you know what my brain is like there was a time where I met them on a train. I knew who they were, I knew of them, and I knew them through somebody else, right? I met them on a train, and they gave me some of the most sound advice for that time in my life, that point in my life, that stuck with me, has stuck with me ever since, and completely changed my life for the position that I was in. I must have been about 18 or 19. So the position that I was in then to now, so I barely fucking know this person, truthfully, other than through Instagram and the odd conversations we've had, but I feel a very deep connection with them because of that one instance on this train. And it, honest, it honestly, from that day, my entire life just like turned a corner and changed. Who the- is this person? I can't even think who it is. <laughs> It, honestly you would never be able to guess who it is i guarantee you would never guess who it is because it's so no. random we both know who it is and it's r- a really random person that straight up you will not be able to figure it out can you bleep it can you I, just tell me and bleep it <laughs> i can bleep it but it also ruins the fun for me because the fucking confusion in your face is beautiful man <laughs> just tell me who it is and bleep it i need to know <laughs> it's no, I would never have guessed that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I didn't even know you knew each other. Like. Yeah, exactly. That's how fucking like far fetched it is. We're like we've had about, I think we've had about three or four f- conversations in our entire lives, but we both know a lot about each other. Yeah, and I guess that's just the power of social media and power stuff. Power of social know? media, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I guess I've got people like that. I I, I can't. I can't think of any specifics. Like a lot, like my brain's going to clients. You know, yeah. like yeah, like clients who are like, I shouldn't get on with, but I do for whatever reason. Right. Like, okay. Do you have a good example of that? Actually, I would love to hear that. Yeah, like there's like a couple of boys that come in. Like they're all fairly young, you know, like under the age of twenty five. So <laughs> I should ha- I should hate them. Yeah. <laughs> like as we know. And they're like proper like football lads like laddie lads you right know, like yeah yeah sp- spicy as fuck oh get the same like, haircut in the real world i have a deep disdain for these kind of people you know <laughs> but then they come into the shop and like they talk to me and i'm like oh you are a real person yeah like you are you have things going on in your head yeah you know like not, in a, not like not in a crappy way. Like not like me being like, oh, you're a spice boy. Like you, don't yeah, have, yeah, you yeah. Don't, no you substance. Don't have a brain. I'm just being yeah. like, like people tell me stuff that they don't tell anyone else, you know. And it's part of the, jo- 
it's part of the job that I really enjoy. Yeah. You know, I enjoy that people trust me enough to tell not tell me the secrets, but at least like divulge some information to me that they probably wouldn't tell anyone else. Yeah. Namely their mates. You yeah. Know, because <clears throat> so am I. I'm a guy they see like every <laughs> three, four weeks, you know. Yeah, like I, I can imagine <clears throat> I mean I come for a haircut every fucking four years. But I can imagine a lot of people treat it as like almost a therapy session just to like can uh, I can I purge no idea. can I purge what's on their mind because they have no one else to say it to and you're almost just yeah. like what's the word for it you're like the you know that game you used to play when you're a kid you would just throw a ball at a wall to just vent out your frustration you're that wall yeah they're I'm throwing the ball wall. you are bouncing the ball back to them so they can just keep going yeah i mean there was there's this one guy in particular like now that i'm thinking about it, he's not so much of like a like a laddie football lad or whatever mm. but he's He's not my kind of guy, you know? Okay. I met him through a cousin right. of mine. Um, they worked, <laughs> not just they somebody, worked somebody else's cousin. Yeah, not someone else's cousin. I met him through <laughs> a cousin. A cousin of <laughs> someone. <laughs> I met him through a family member of mine. Right, okay. <laughs> um, they worked together for a long time, and like my cousin and him are fairly similar human beings. Uh-huh. And at the time, I was just like, Obviously, cut from the same cloth. Look at the fucking Nickies. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> and then he, 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 I've been cutting his hair now for, I don't know, years now. Right. Years. Like, since I, like, I, I moved into like, the Glasgow shop. Right, okay. And he, he's a businessman, a salesman more than anything, you know? Like, and that's just how he is. And you can tell everything's 100 miles an hour. And. His, his brain's just, like, constantly counting numbers, you know, that way? Yeah, right, okay. Um, so, uh, to begin with, I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, I can have a bit of a laugh. Like, I'm, like, enough of a social chameleon that I can just, like, pretend to like anyone. Yeah. But then, like, I did, li- I did like him. Like, I was like, God, there's something about you. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, Aye. Th- there's, some- there's something behind this, like, thick veil that you've got on right now. Like, I need to know him. That vulnerable person in the background. Yeah, and, like, I, rem- I remember him, like, talking to me about, like, his now ex-girlfriend. Uh-huh. And, like, never in a bad way, you know? It, like, they just, like, it fizzled, away, fizzled out. Right, okay. And it was just, like, he was kind of, like, looking for a way out of it, I guess. And, like, he eventually was just, like, look, it's not happening. Whatever. Sound. And then, like, there was, a, there was a notable change in him, you know? Like, he was, like, you are a different person now. Oh, really? Like, this is strange to see, like... Yeah, he was just kind of, like, still the same guy, uh-huh. but he was just, like, things he was saying. I was like, oh, that seems kind of positive, you know? Right. He was just, like, right. he was just like talking about like how he's just going to take things easy. It is what it is. Like, he was just kind of going to focus on himself for a little bit. Yeah. And then, like, I hadn't seen him for a while, and he came in. I was like, what the f- all right, what's going on? Like, not seeing you. He, like, added me on Facebook and stuff, like, in between all this. Uh-huh. And then, like, I seen him, like, put up a photo, like... Him and some girl, and I was like, "All right." Oh, yeah. So I was like, "I'm gonna question him about it." Yeah. I was like, Here, what, what's the deal? Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, it's just a lassie I've been talking to." Blah blah. blah. I'm like, "All right, okay, cool, whatever. That's what it is." Next haircut comes around. I was like, "All right." And he was like, "Hi, what's up with you?" He's like, "Ah, nothing." I was like, "All right, cool." I was like, "What are you up to?" He's like, "Ah, oh, I've just been in, in Liverpool with this, this lassie." I was like, "All right." And he's like, "I, I don't know." I was like, what do you mean you don't know? Oh, yeah, uh, he's like, he's, he's trying to find that way, that comfortable way for him to start talking about something, you know, when they start yeah. trying to open up. And then it happened, and uh. he was like, oh, we got ma- we got matching tattoos. Uh. And I was like, uh. what? You get matching tattoos? Uh. This was supposed to be cash. Uh. And he was like, I, it was, I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, he was like, I don't know, but I'm having a good time. And I was like, cool, man. Respect. Like, roll with it. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, months later... Not even like months, maybe a month. He was like, aye, so she's pregnant. And I was like, <laughs> coolio. <laughs> but I think like that turning point where he went from being like unhappy to happy. Yeah. I was there for it, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Because he would like in that half an hour tell me everything he needed to tell me. And I'd just be like, all right, I get it. Yeah. And I could tell him from my point of view. Because I think I'm, I think I'm older than him. Not by much, but, uh-huh. or maybe the same age, maybe. That yeah. seems more likely. Yeah. Um. And I don't know. Like I think I don't think any of his mates know it the way I know it. Yeah. There's uh, there's probably what I'm thinking is just 
coming from my perspective as not being a guy coming into barbers very often but he probably saw you as an impartial party he, Aye, he came in just thinking i'm a client of yours we are not particularly friends like you no. are the business i am the customer i am going to say shit to you and just throw axes at the wall and see what sticks and just like he probably he probably did come in just being like yo if you have advice for me i will actually appreciate it because you don't understand the situation fully you're just getting the kind of like bite-sized chunks i'm giving you yeah, but I feel like those bite-sized chunks that he was giving me were all truth, you know? Whereas I think if he speaks to his mates about it, he's kind of giving them watered uh, down bits. Like, uh, yeah, it's yeah, so he still feels he's like it natural, up. you know? He's fully ladding it up, just like, oh, shagging yeah. this bird, you know? And it's that way, like, as much as I say I'm like a social chameleon, like I only mean that in the sense that I can talk to people about just about anything, and I can... I can tell people the right jokes, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I can, yeah. I can read the room, and I yeah. can be like, right, okay, I know what... I can I know enough about football to make a football joke. Yeah. I know enough about this dumb TV show to make a, a comment about that. Yeah. You know, so I can I can do it that way. But I'm still the slightly high pitched voice camp guy. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, bro, you I, do I not change. have a high pitched voice. Where the fuck are you getting that? I've listened to this podcast. I have a high pitched voice. <laughs> I had. You do know what was the first thing? Do you know what was the first thing I said to Shanna? I was like, "Here's my voice always that high." <laughs> She was like, you don't have a high-pitched voice, but I hear it as high-pitched. I know I'm slightly camp, I know that, like, but that's fine. And like. who cares, it's Pride Month, who cares if you're camp? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, whatever, like, I, I'm fine with it, you know, but because I'm quite comfortable in who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, Preach. So I, I think that, I, I think that doing the job that I do, I get to see all these different people, and they... I don't know if they know who I am, you know? Yeah. Like, because I show them parts of me. But I am, like I say, in my own ears, a high-pitched camp human being <laughs> who's always been who's over, who's over, always been overly emotional and oversharer yeah. and very soft, yeah. you know? But there's enough of a, a wall there that I can kind of look like a tough guy every now and then, you know? Yeah, like, I, I think I think calling yourself a, a, an oversharer is a bit unfair, you're an oversharer when you know people. Like uh, I didn't sometimes know. Sometimes I just go off in one. I sometimes I didn't know a lot about you for the first couple of years that we fucking knew each other. I I that might have, you might have just been standoffish with me. Maybe we start. Maybe this is we're about to unpack the fact that like you didn't like me at first. Is that about to be a thing? Absolutely not. You were the like. Whenever we played gigs together in separate bands, you were always the first face in the crowd that I wanted to see. <laughs> uh, you like, and I mean that was the cutest like, were... fucking thing you have ever fucking said. Yeah, well, I am the face that stands yeah. out in the crowd. Like I feel like I am now well, in like a fucking. You're a fucking <laughs> head and shoulders above everyone else. So it was easier <laughs> to see you. I don't know if it was just that, <laughs> but um, I I don't know. Like when we were younger, you were always the one that was the most welcoming because you are that's just who you are you might think you're a bit standoffish but that's just i think because you're tall like you're just like everyone thinks you're like looking (laughs) down on them but you're not (laughs) you're just up there (laughs) because then they realize just how fucking like stupid i am and they're just like oh cool it's fine we'll just we'll and that's why we got on because we could always just have a laugh yeah you know yeah and um no i've never been standoffish with you i don't think I think I get standoffish when I'm in a bad mood because I don't want people to talk to me, <laughs> usually. <laughs> it's that simple. Or I, I'm like... But it's oh, it's like standoffish to save themselves, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm standoffish yeah. because... I know if you say something that annoys me, I'm not going to be able to bite my tongue. Yeah. Like, yeah. it happened last week. It happened last week in work. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even in a bad mood. I was just like... I don't know, I think I was like too hot or something to be working. Yeah. I wanted to be outside, like, on, in a park. Like, yeah. Just chilling. And like... This boy, like, we the door was open. We had, like, something in front of the door to stop people coming in because that's one of the rules that we've got just mm-hmm. now is, like, one person to each barber kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, <coughs> in the shop at a time. And this boy, like, came barging through the door. And I was like, all right, you got an appointment? Like, because instantly I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, man, cool. Just stand outside. That's why that thing's there. Yeah, I couldn't help it because yeah. I was in a bad mood. So the snidey remark, like, 
came out. Ah. And there was nothing I could do. Yeah, but and like, like this boy, but this boy was like a six foot seven rugby player. Right, I was like, right, right. But well, it's game over now. But you're also from Bridgeton, so like I have noticed that in you. Like you are very soft spoken. You kind of know what you're saying at all times. You're very easy to speak to. But I have seen like the hard part come out of you every so often. And it's like, I actually like, do you want to know what I, I like? I love it when it happens because I like feel safer because I am such a bitch. Like I am a huge fucking bitch when it comes to like confrontation and shit. So if I know you're there and something's going down, I'm like, it's all good. Gary's here. Cause he know like you either, you either know how to de-escalate or make it funny by being hard as fuck and making that person bitch out on whatever's happening. So it's like, yeah, it, it's you're, su- like you're such a I good will guy throw hands. <laughs> I have no qualms, you know? If I if I need to, like, show someone the old ones and twos, I yeah, will, yeah, yeah. you know? But <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think it's because I'm unassuming, you mm-hmm. know? I'm always, I've am i always been kind of quietly confident. Yes. Um, like I've, al- I've always had that in me where I'm quite sure and certain about most things. Yeah. Um, in other words stubborn yes but is that way that i can i read the room i always read the room yeah because you've got to like yeah yeah i'm not gonna start fighting with the biggest guy in the room if there's no one else (laughs) around me you know like i know that i've got enough mates that'll be okay or at least enough enough people that like me (laughs) like (laughs) yeah just in that situation you're like you know what richie has that old man strength like I'm good yeah. right now. If something goes down, Rich is here. It's strength in numbers yeah. always with me. You know, it's <laughs> gang mentality. I can't help it. But I mean, like your reaction to that was totally right. If there was something blocking the door, like to any rational human being, that means don't walk in. Ah, you would think so. But this motherfucker, <laughs> it this, happens. This motherfucker coming blazing in. I mean, I would react in the same way, even though I am a giant bitch. And I would pull, but I would also say it under my breath. Just like, yo, can you yeah, stand so back? Passive. Because that's why he's there, because don't be a fucking fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I would be a huge bitch about it, but I would also make a comment under my breath. But yeah, I, I don't think I've ever been standoffish. I think I'd, I play my cards close to my chest sometimes. Yeah. But I think if I'm really, if I'm going through it, like... I can't actually help it. I don't think. I think there's like a, a filter that just disappears. Yeah. Like there's nothing I can do to stop that. Yeah. It just um, it just comes out of you. Like I think. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I need to be as a, a very highly strung out point before that comes out of me, because I am very like I am the first guy to laugh in <clears throat> the face of awkwardness. So if something yeah. so if something was to go down, like say we were fucking in the van going to fucking Birmingham or some bullshit to play a show and somebody makes a comment in the van that doesn't go down well with somebody else, I'm the first guy to try and make a joke and make a laugh because I'm trying to diffuse the situation. I never want to see it. Like, do you wonder what it is? I just think the fighting is fucking stupid. I just think it's so dumb. Fighting and arguing to me is so dumb. And I hate seeing it and I I hate it even more when I see it with my friends. I hate it. Like, see, anytime I saw any of my mates getting in a fight, I was immediately there trying to stop it because I just hate seeing that shit happen. And I don't know if that's like, nest. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing to be honest. Because like sometimes, I guess a fight is just kind of needed because you're just like, yeah. let's let's just get the frustrations out, and then it's done. We don't need to think about that again. We've had the fucking tiff. Now we're over. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm like that's, right that's in there more... trying to make a wedge. Like <laughs> everything. Because cool. sometimes what you'll find happen is that both of them turn on you. Like that yeah. can be a thing. Yeah. You know, that's happened a couple. Of I times. low key love watching people fight. <laughs> it is one of like life's simple pleasures. I think it's gross and I, it's it's not good. But like there's part of me that's just kind of like those guys are so mad for no reason. Yeah. Because it's never a real reason, you know. Yeah. Like you go like, as done. Remember... You go as done. Tony Glenn. There's just cunts fighting over like a fucking PS4 game. And you're just like yo, yeah. yo, come like, on. The, the big, the big like fucking road that's outside my house. Like, yeah. The one that you kind of drive up to turn into the cul-de-sac. Yeah, the one that's oh, full of Union cul-de-sac Jackson cul-de-sac shit. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like so, <laughs> the kids, like, the kids, like the gangs in the area the kids. used to fight up and down that road right okay so you have uh, the young Brigton Derry 
and you had uh, the Baltic Fleet. What? Um, you had two young teams? No, no, no. Baltic Fleet was like just up a wee bit. So that was like Dalmarnock. Right, right, right. And right then okay. there was the young Brigton Derry, which was all of this area. But then it broke down into little sects. So you had the young Reed Street Dickey. You had the White Scheme Derry, I think they were called. The what? Or some shit. The White Scheme. The White Scheme. Basically just like, aye, there's like flats and houses like to my left that are just made of like white stone. Right, so it's nothing to do with race. (laughs) You're not trying to tell me that there's like neo-Nazis. There's a neo-Nazi fucking scheme. No, no, no. no. (laughs) But yeah, they would all come together and be like the Brigton Derry and they'd fight the Baltic. And uh, they would like fight up and down my street, but my window like looks out onto the street. Uh Uh-huh. Um, so I'd be like lights off, blinds drawn, which like looking, <laughs> waiting, because they didn't fight properly, and I think that's what was so exciting about it for me. So when I see fights now, I'm like, holy shit, they're doing it. Yeah, like, because they would do that thing where they would like prance forward and then they'd like retreat back instantly, up and then yep. Yep. toss a brick, yeah, and it went nowhere near anyone. Yeah, I remember there was a couple of times like so they ran into like Maui Street. I don't think I live in a cul-de-sac. I don't know if it is. Is it a cul-de-sac? Uh, well, it's a dead Probably end. Probably not because the house it's is a dead end. Houses don't. Yeah, it's a dead end. I call. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a dead end. Yeah, it's not okay, a cul-de-sac because cul-de-sacs technically have a bit where you can turn. You can't yeah, turn the, the in your fucking street. Around. You need to fucking reverse out, and it's awful. Reverse. I know that's fair. <laughs> well, they, they used to run into this wee bit, and the boy tripped <laughs> over the curb outside. <gasps> Yeah, oh, it was game over for that boy. Oh. They, 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 they threw a glass bottle down, just smashed on his head. <gasps> and then, like, kept laying into him. And I was like, yo, keep going. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> I was, like, so amped up because I think I'd been waiting months for them to, like, actually do something. It's like anticipation. Other. Like, you're watching a Christopher Nolan film and waiting yeah. for that final thing to happen. Yeah, so it's like, I think now when I see fights, I'm just like, <sighs> they must be so mad. Yeah, like, yeah, that, like, yeah. They had to just let it out. Yeah. Like, I can't help it. Even if I'm, like, flicking through Twitter or something, I see a fight video, I'm like, well, I'm watching that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I am part of, like, the fucking, or I'm a, well, I don't even know what it's called on Reddit. They have a fucking subreddit called Fight Porn. And that's yes. all it is, is just, it's just fighting. That's the thing. See, if I'm not close to it or a part of it, then it's fine. But see, if I'm near a fight, oh, god damn, I'm such a fucking biatch. I think what, I get what it is the for same, me... Like, no, yeah. and you go, man. I, I get, like, the same sort of adrenaline as if I'm going to be in the fight <laughs> when I'm watching it. Well, I'm like, see if he comes near me, I'm going to hit him. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, why? I'm not involved in this, but yeah. if he comes near me, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to fucking knock I'm him out. never going to hit him. Yeah, I'm not going to hit him. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, I get that same sort of, like, of fire in my belly, you know? I think it is, what it is for me is, like, where I came up, it wasn't, like, the kind of, oh, we're going to fight a cunt. Oh, we'll throw each other, throw shit at each other. It was just, like, here, you cunt. Let's yeah. let's scrap. So I like, like my, uh, I mean you know my brother. You wouldn't understand yeah. the type of person that he was as a teenager. Like you know my brother from, like twenty eight plus. Do you know what I mean? Like you know him as yeah, older. I know Ross. your brother from being your brother. Yes. And then I know him as being a client in the shop. Yes. And then I know him as the, the young version that Richie tells. <laughs> So see, you know, like, so see the young version that Richie tells. There is uh, an extra layer that Richie probably didn't uh, equate or talk about. So, yeah. my brother, as a as a ginger, grown up in uh, a small village, I guess, he was picked on a lot. So he learned very quickly how to just like punch a motherfucker. I. Yeah, I, I have seen so many like videos of that dude in a fight. It's fucking unreal. See when everyone was kind of about like flip phones, like Motorola, Motorola razors and shit, like the yeah. tiniest little fucking screen, like those kind of those kind of videos. Just my brother throwing hands at people. So like, I've kind of had my brother to do some fighting for me. <laughs> so if <laughs> if the bad man in the park stole my ball. I found my brother, and my brother would kick the shit out of him for me. So I think that's what it was. It was like, I never had to do my own fighting because my brother was already hardy, and he would do it for me. But I still didn't like it when it was happening. So I would just go to my brother and be like, oh, the bad man stole my ball. Can you go get the ball for me? And then the next minute, Ross is like pummeling the guy's fucking head in on like the monkey bars in the park. And I'm just like, yo, I just wanted my ball. 
Like, that's all it was, man. <laughs> he had the fucking straight red rage, is what he had. I'm even amped up just hearing about that, you know? <laughs> I love it. I, mean, I don't the, know what it is about fights. I mean, the people... It's like morbid curiosity. Yeah. Carcasses, you know, you can't, you can't, like, look away. Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh my god, I'm glued. Like, yeah. That that is a that is a that is a door that could be opened in many fucking corridors. To be honest, that morbid curiosity because it's like, I mean, there was a long period of time where that was like, I listened to like purely true crime podcasts and shit, just for that, just to tickle that morbid curiosity part of your brain, and yeah. I actually think it started affecting me because I listened to it like almost too much, where it was like everything that was happening i was like i was almost associating it with something that i had heard on like a true crime podcast or something so i was like that is so fucking unhealthy like each part of my life is now going to be run by something that i heard that happened to one person and however many billions that there are in the world but i was somehow connecting it to the situation that i was in it's a dangerous yeah. road going down that shit. It's so yeah, fucking that's... dangerous. Yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> I think that's where I learned what anxiety was, was just listening to fucking true crime podcast. And I was like, oh, that's anxiety. Cool. I've found it now. <laughs> that's what that is. Ah. <laughs> Sick, here we are. Oh, man. Oh, jeebus. Well, on that murderous note, we are over an hour. On that murderous note. <laughs> um, Thanks for saying I don't have a high-pitched voice. That's really made me feel better about myself. I don't think you do. I think you've just dreamt that in your brain. We all think we sound different until we hear each other on a video or on a recording. So don't worry about yeah. it. In your head, you sound like Morrissey. On the outside, you don't. It's fine. Uh, I don't want to sound like Morrissey either. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I would go out tonight, but I haven't got a stitch to wear. That's as close as I'll get. It's pretty nice. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Pretty nice. I appreciate that. So, for for our beautiful listeners, our Dead End family out there, this week we have updated the pod, the playlist. I was about to say we've updated the podcast. We've updated the playlist with five more songs each. Um, so there is an extra ten songs on there. Let me get it up so we can get a little a little taster. I mean, it's not a taster. It's already there, and we're recording this on Thursday, and then this episode won't actually be out on, until Tuesday. So, if you want to see it, it's been there for fucking four days at least. <sighs> so yeah, I'm really glad you're doing this bit. Gary, <laughs> <laughs> Gary has added some Beastie Boys, some Asap Rocky, and one that was totally out of fucking left field for me. We are scientists. <laughs> that shook me i didn't expect that if i'm being totally honest that was that was a big banger in the ipod classic day <sighs> oh uh, i don't bring those days up to me man i'm still I, depressed i still love we are scientists like i think they're a really cool band they, they have they some, some really cool good ideas songs. you know yeah yeah, and yeah that song's a banger there's one song in particular that i really like i'm not going to try and find it because i'm trying to wrap up i have added some gorillas uh, and then some heavier stuff because the last time I added stuff I, it was mainly hip hop so I tried to go down the heavier route so there's a bit of trash talk and you have Bib who are I want to say they're from New York and they are the most fun fucking band of all time and Gary doesn't like them for whatever reason but the, it has been updated so there's an extra 10 songs in there for everyone to listen to it is very quickly turning into my favorite playlist of all time because we do have very varied uh what's the word i'm looking for taste tastes there we go thank you got very varied tastes but at the same time they're kind of connected in a way between the two of us yeah. so it's very um it's very varied but stays true to who we are so it's a lot of fun um Nick, we'll do the same again next week. We'll add another 10 songs, five each. Uh, we'll just keep it going um, until we run out of songs to add so it could end up getting to the point where it's like thousands of hours long. Um, this has been Dead End Friends. Do the things. Like. Subscribe. Fucking share. Actually share the shit. Just like, if you really like this episode, please go and do it. And we thank you and so you much for share listening. It, 
tigers. Yes, that's just a good tigers, one. Just, so we see it. So we know. So we know that what's going on out there. Uh, we've got a couple of things happening in the background that we're hoping to bring into the light in the next couple of weeks, just depending on what happens. So you can all get brought into the fun stuff as we get there. Um, thank you so much for listening. We really do love talking shit and just if somebody listens then it's cool my name has been craig jimison you have been gary gordon we will speak to you guys next week love you too man